carrying a rifle. It's, it's necessary or it's required to carry a rifle whenever we're outside of town here due to uh, polar bears. Don't be fooled by appearances. Graham isn't a hunter, he's a scientist in Longyearbyen, a town where there are more polar bears than inhabitants. He specialized in Arctic permafrost, and today his team is drilling a sample to carry out some tests. This is what permafrost is. It's, it's soil like you would find anywhere else, except that it's frozen. In this Arctic region, temperatures are increasing twice as fast as on the rest of the planet. Graham's tests prove it. Permafrost is thawing. The temperature of permafrost has, has increased over the past two decades. And so what's been observed during that period is a, is a warming of the ground by something like one half to one degree Celsius. Graham takes us to his lab at the university, the furthest north in the world, so we can have a closer look. The organic material in a sample like this is probably on the order of about three, three to 4,000 years old. Permafrost is in, I mean, in many ways, it is like a time capsule. It's, it, if something is within the permafrost, then it's preserved there until it, until it thaws again. Though it may look pristine and barren, this landscape is not void of life. On the contrary, in the soil beneath my feet, there's a world of microorganisms. Permafrost is like a massive freezer. It's cold, it's dark, there's not much oxygen. It's the ideal place for bacteria and viruses to survive intact for thousands of years. Thawing permafrost is like opening Pandora's box with unpredictable consequences. A few hundred meters away, on a hill overlooking the former coal town, the local priest shows us the cemetery and its unusual tombs, over a century old. So this is long been a graveyard uh, with these special crosses, and uh, you can see the first graves are from 1917, 1918. That was the Spanish flu. The epidemic killed over 20 million people around the world, including seven young miners in Longyearbyen. Since, they've become somewhat of a scientific curiosity. In the 90s, a team of scientists exhumed some of the bodies and removed samples, hoping to find traces of the virus, to no avail. These days, the tombs could resurface again due to climate change. In the last two years, it has been developing uh, avalanche threat and the landslide So just, just up from the hill from here, uh, there was recently a landslide due to climate change? Yes, the lands coming down, stones, and uh, the danger is that it will hit also the, the graves and the graveyard. Potentially, the town is living on a ticking time bomb. The consequences of climate change are weird, and Longyearbyen is by no means an isolated case. In August 2016, in remote northern Russia, an anthrax outbreak killed a 12-year-old boy and sent dozens of people to the hospital. It's believed a heat wave fueled the disease. Soaring temperatures melted permafrost, exposing an infected reindeer carcass buried in the Siberian tundra. Now that might sound potentially apocalyptic, but don't panic yet. Not all bacteria and viruses survive when unthawed, as far as we know. And scientists haven't reactivated the most dangerous viruses present in permafrost because it's banned by international law. It's much too risky. But there's still a cause for concern, according to a French specialist, namely time-traveling viruses. On the one hand, infectious diseases like smallpox or tuberculosis could be revived. But then there are all the viruses and diseases we know nothing about. Diseases that may have caused the extinction of Neanderthal man, they could potentially be revived too. Local authorities are aware of the risk and have taken measures in the archipelago of Svalbard. People say it's illegal to die in Longyearbyen. In reality, it's illegal to be buried here and has been since the 1950s. For some people, it can be quite tough. It's not the easiest thing to accept that they can't be buried here. I, I recognize it, but um, uh, then again, that's the framework and everybody knows about it when they arrive here in, in Svalbard. Mm. Uh, 
here is a lot of crazy picture of me. <laughs> Marianne is a long year bin veteran. She owns the Polo Rig, a local institution. The name of this girl is Lila. <laughs> so all, all people say, oh my God, it's like to come in a museum. She has spent 20 years in Long Year Bin. At the age of 70, she's starting to think about retirement, and she knows the rules. She can't stay. But like many locals, she jokes about the town's reputation. Yes, you can die here. <laughs> Why die here? And they say, Marianne, you can't die here. You have to go to Mainland and die. <laughs> <laughs> in Long Year Bin, there are no retirement homes, no geriatric services. When the time comes, Marianne plans to return to her home on the Norwegian continent, leaving behind the town where people never die, but live with the threat of thawing permafrost and time-traveling epidemics.